गुड टू गो हेलो गाइज गुड आफ्टरनून आई एम गौरंग तोरवेकर द सी टी ओ एंड को फाउंडर ऑफ एटॉरस सॉरी Yeah, I'm Gaurang Torvekar, the CTO and co-founder of Atorus. So, just to give you a little bit of background about our company, uh, so I started this company last year along with David Moskowitz, uh, who is my co-founder. David has a great background in blockchain and Bitcoin. He sold his Bitcoin company in 2015, and that's when we met and we started discussing about ideas. So we, uh, we we were discussing what can we do with blockchain? What are the problems in blockchain that we can solve? So we uh, we at that time we found out that writing smart contracts itself was quite difficult, and hence uh, we set out to build a company uh, which does smart contracts as a service. So you must have heard about SaaS, uh, but we are doing SCAAS, that is smart contracts as a service. So I have a background in technology. I have been a developer in several startups across India and Singapore, uh, and now I'm doing this company with David. So at Atorus, uh, we want to build standards around open certificates uh, through blockchain and smart contracts technology. I'll tell you what Atorus does, but let me just walk you through the entire blockchain ecosystem and how uh, we fit into that ecosystem. So this was the headline this month. Uh, R3 has stopped doing blockchain. Uh, there was also a news R3 is buying Ethereum for 59 million. But for it not, this was a fake news. Because R3 did not stop doing blockchain. Because they were never doing blockchain. They have been doing DLT, that is distributed ledger technology. And this is a great diagram uh, drawn by Anthony Lewis, who is the research head of the Singapore lab. So according to them, DLT is not exactly a blockchain, but a blockchain is a subset of DLT. I don't want to get into the specifics, but I, I'm telling you about all of this because I really think that blockchain is currently at the bottom of this cycle, bottom of the hype cycle. Last year, it was a big hype in blockchain. Everybody was doing blockchain, banks were doing blockchain, other financial services were doing blockchain. This year though, it is in the trough of disillusionment. Uh, but but fret not because it only has a, uh, only has upwards to go. Blockchain is definitely maturing. We as a blockchain company are seeing many blockchain pilots coming up, and I think this is a great thing for the entire blockchain ecosystem. So there was another news. Uh, some companies, some enterprises, they came together and started something called an enterprise Ethereum alliance, which is. Uh, which is a consortium of many companies uh, who came together to, uh, you know, to expand the Ethereum blockchain into the enterprises. Uh, there was another another headline. Uh, there's a company called Monax who joined Enterprise Ethereum Alliance. And the next day, I saw a news that Monax also joined Hyperledger. So now, now as you know, uh, Ethereum is about a public blockchain and open blockchain, and Hyperledger is essentially an enterprise blockchain. So I was surprised. Uh, I like I didn't understand how can the same company join both the both the alliances, both the consortiums. Uh, so that's why I just wanted to give you a quick overview of what both of these consortiums are. As I told you, Enterprise Ethereum Alliance has been formed uh, mainly to promote Ethereum-based technologies. Uh, and standardize the settings across the enterprises. Uh, there are, there are, uh, and Hyperledger is actually a part of the Linux Foundation. Under Linux Foundation, they have set up a Hyperledger project, uh, under which there are many technologies under incubation currently. So one of them is Hyperledger Fabric. Uh, some another one is Intel Sawtooth, uh, and Corda is also trying to get into that incubation phase currently. Uh, I don't know what's happening with that, but it's they're trying to do that. Uh, there are again same companies in both the consortiums. Companies like J.P. Morgan, Monax, uh, even Intel, they are in both the consortiums. So, looking at all this mess, what do we do at Atorus? At Atorus, we do BLT. We don't do DLT, we don't do blockchains, we do BLT. Anyway, jokes aside, uh, at Atorus, we are not building blockchains. We are building user applications. Uh, we are essentially blockchain agnostic. 
uh, all these companies are competing at the protocol layer, Hyperledger, Ethereum, Bitcoin, and many other blockchains, Ripple as well. Uh, but we are uh, one layer above that. Essentially, we are like a middleware using which people can start deploying smart contracts in an easier manner. So now, let's get to what we are doing exactly. Uh, let me take you back to 1995 when my co-founder David uh, got a great degree called Bachelor of Arts in Psychology. He got this degree from SUNY University, uh, that's back in New York. Uh, and he also has an MBA. Uh, so can, can anybody tell me here how long it takes to do an MBA, how long it takes to get this kind of degree? One year, two years, right? Yeah. Uh, but David is a very cunning guy. He got this degree in just 20 minutes using Photoshop. <laughs> uh, obviously, it's not a true degree and he, he's not claiming to have an MBA. But you know, this is a universal problem. Many people face this problem. Yahoo CEO had falsified his credentials. Moldova's prime minister had falsified his credentials. And this is a universal problem. You don't know whether the degree that you're showing me is true or not, because there's no way to verify that other than going back to the institution and calling them and, you know, wasting all that time on it. What's the solution to this? Solution to this is digital certificates on the blockchain. This is a sample certificate that we were giving out at the Neon Polytechnic booth uh, at the Singapore FinTech Festival last year. So uh, we are giving out this kind of certificate to all the particip all the uh, you know attendees at the conference. Uh, so now it, uh, the next question is why are we using blockchain? Uh, using blockchain, it gives us a decentralized solution to this uh, big problem. Uh, now, if I put a centralized server in one university, they are not going to open up their database to all the people. But if we put these certificates, these signatures on the blockchain. Uh, anybody from the world can verify that this certificate was uh, actually issued to me by that institution. Also, it gives a potential revenue opportunity to the university. And blockchain has virtually no downtime, as evidenced by S3 uh, before two weeks, where S3 was down for almost half a day, and many companies lost millions in that. Uh, so how it works exactly? <coughs> Uh, technically, uh, what we do is we create a smart contract from that certificate. And in that transaction, we actually put the hash of the uh, actual PDF of the certificate. So when we put that on the blockchain, uh, the student, that is the receiver, gets a notification. He gets an email along with the transaction hash of that certificate. Uh, and now uh, he can go ahead and give the PDF and the transaction hash to the institution, to the employer. Uh, next step, the employer doesn't go and need to speak with the university anymore. Uh, he will just look at the transaction hash on the blockchain and verify that this dig digital signature was indeed uh, initiated by the institution itself. And this way, we are trying to reduce the entire workflow of this and make it uh, really efficient and uh, trustless in a way. Uh, obviously, we are on both the blockchains. We can deploy this on Ethereum, and we can deploy this on Hyperledger Fabric as well. Uh, obviously, uh, version 0.6 and not 1.0. Along with uh, the trustless verification, it becomes really easy to share your digital uh, diplomas, digital degrees on various social media. And as you know, people love sharing accomplishments, and businesses love sharing accomplishments. Uh, this solution is not only applicable in uh, educational institutions and for diplomas, but this is applicable in several different areas. You can take the same technology, same idea, issuance, uh, receiving and verification on the blockchain and apply it to finance, to logistics, to supply chain, to real estate, to HR and many other industries. Uh, so I think this is a very versatile solution and we can apply it to many different places. I also have a demo, but right now I don't have some any time to show the demo. So I'll just go into the uh, open standards. So with opencertificates.co, uh, we are trying to create open standards ar uh, around certifications. And we want as many people to use this solution as possible. Because you know, as a company, as an individual, I can cater to only some geographies in the world. But I want this to be a solution, to be a standard, so that other people can build on top of this. 
and we can also do some industry collaboration using that. Uh, so we are trying to be compliant with the Mozilla Open Badges and MIT Block Cert standard. So MIT is doing this on the Bitcoin blockchain uh, while we are doing on the Ethereum and Hyperledger blockchain. So uh, as you might know, uh, MIT uh, has a collaboration company called Learning Machine and they did a trial in Malta uh, like two, three months ago for the digital certificates. And we are doing a pilot in Singapore now. So yeah, I think that's it from my side. Uh, I won't get into this. If you have any questions, you can contact me on the email or you can get in touch with me later after the talk. Thank you so much. Thank you, Garang. Uh, next up, we have Toby from 10X. He's going to be speaking about the commit network, which allows you to move your assets from one blockchain to another blockchain. So another uh, deep tech protocol layer application. Thanks, David. Can you hear me? Is this on? Oh, thank you. OK, uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Toby. Uh, I'm from 10X. And today, I want to talk a little bit about the protocol that we're building